Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Her First Time Hayden Plays Neo. Today is episode 6 which means it's going to be mission 6 and oh dear god it looks like a water level. Fantastic. Okay we're starting out on dry land which is a good thing I suppose. Let's go down. Oh it's the mage girl. Let's see what she has to say. Okay, which way will we go first? Okay, do we go into the runes first or do we go over where it looks like it's an archer or a guy? Let's go up here and see if we can snipe him out. What is up here? Plunge attack? I know water levels are kind of infamous for being badly designed. The one that springs to mind that people always go on about is the Water Temple in The Legend of Zelda, the Ocarina of Time. I never actually played it myself. I was never... I think Zelda, the Zelda games are something you have to be indoctrinated into at a young age. Like, you need to have grown up with them to really love and Not appreciate them, but to be truly invested in them and love them. Because I most certainly am not. What I did play, like, my, my experience with Zelda is... I got a lend of Oracle of Seasons off one of my friends from primary school on the game by Color, and I used to play that quite a bit. That's actually some of my favorite memories is playing that game. Like when it, my parents would have been at work and I was minding my little brother, just in the sitting room, watching Malcolm in the middle, playing Oracle of the Seasons, not understanding any of the puzzles and eating all the junk food I could get my hands on. Okay, that was quite a little quick roundabout. I don't want to fall down into any of these again. Okay. Will I be able to snipe him out? Oh god, that didn't look good. Oh no. What other Zelda games have I played? I suppose other than that, I got the remake of Majora's Mask. And that came out on the 3DS. This looks like that Yumi Bozo guy from the start. Or not the start of the last mission. And it doesn't look like I can kill them avoided for now. There was a little green guy there, wasn't there? He's gone now. Like, I suppose the games that I love that a lot of people kind of snigger at nowadays in retrospect is Sonic. Like, I, I was a Sega kid at heart growing up. Oh, this is why she gave me the flint and the fire amulet. It's one bonfire lit. And... With Sonic, obviously Sonic couldn't swim. There is that really iconic I can't do it. The heartbeat kind of sound when you're about to drown. Like that still gives me palpitations and nightmares whenever I hear it. There's no shortage of fools in any world. I'm here as an testament to that. Oh, no. That was actually one of my rare good uses of the bow. I do actually like the water levels in Sonic, though. Um, what's the third zone in Sonic 2? Is it like the, wa it's the water runes? Aquatic rune zone or something like that? That is some of my... Is some of my um, favorite level design in the game because even though it was predominantly a water level if you took there was all, there was like a, high, a low a mid and a high route you could take throughout the level and you could avoid the water completely throughout the entire zone by just sticking up the top jumping through the tip parts of the rune I suppose that's why I kind of love the Soulsborne games as well with their level designs it's reminiscent of that and I suppose this Neo game 
in a way as well. It gives you options in the direction you go and how you actually overcome the level. What I did realize when I played Sonic Mania though was how difficult like the chemical plant zone was as Knuckles. Like I used to play Sonic 2 with it installed into the top of the Sonic and Knuckles cartridge so you could play as Knuckles through Sonic 2 but like his jump like how poor his jump is is a real disadvantage in that game like Sonic Mania feels like hard mode when you're playing as Knuckles will I cheap it now let's see if I can fight this guy come on He has a lot of health. Yeah, I'll cheap it. There seems to be um, a massive jump spike in difficulty with this, with health and damage done by the enemies. Go camera, no thank you. But yeah, trying to get through like the chemical plant zone, the boss in the oil ocean zone, like that took. I was stuck at that for weeks upon weeks. Like, I actually think I left the game and came back to it when I was playing at his knuckles. Just because it was like, if you fell down into the oil, it was almost impossible to jump back up onto the platforms out of it. It was quite difficult. We lost here again. Nope. Demons. Fire. Fire keeps the monsters at bay. We should probably look for war couple of those like torches that need to be lit Get me off the edge oh god chaos chaos is unfolding so run deeper into the level that's always the best option isn't it okay how can i get across that ladder? oh no please don't be at me it's a very dark game i can't really s tell where i can walk and where i can't okay we're getting around to this archer guy Bye bye. Mr. Water, you go. Hello, Mr. Balabi. I eat flan for dessert. You'll be no different. Not at the moment, obviously, because you'd probably kill me, but I'll run away for now. Make sure I have health. Idiot! 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 Ooh, I only have five elixirs left in stock. That's not good. I'm actually haven't been in the ocean myself since I was about nine years old, and that's not from not being broad. I'm just terrified of fish, and I know a lot of people think that's a really odd fear to have. But what happened was I was really young and I had a day off, sick from school. And I was at home, just in bed for the day. There was no one really around. And I was watching the Discovery Channel. And there was this documentary on about fish in the Amazon River. And it was one of those fish that would swim up. Basically swim up your willy. After the flow of urine. And ever since that I've just been terrified of fish. Because I do not want anything swimming up anywhere. So even when we would go on like beach holidays to Spain and stuff, I would, if my, one particular member, we were like with aunts and uncles and cousins and stuff, and they had hired out a kind of boat that had a big slide on it and everyone went out kind of partying and having fun on it. And just to like be near them, I have to get my own little personal kayak and just float around and act close to it in case anyone tried to get me to go down the slide or anything or to step foot in the water. Like, if people were in the water, I had to be on something dry and out of it at all times. Alright, I'm coming back up to where I died. And it looks like I'm going to die again if I don't concentrate. I mean, have you ever watched, like, David Attenberg's Blue Planet or anything like that? Like, the stuff that lies in the depths of the ocean is ten times scarier than those black blobs that we're seeing popping up here. This is all greens. There can't be anything good. Nope. I mean, I might actually insert some examples of why I don't go in the water. Like, could you imagine any of these things just floating up beside you? Oh, phew. Almost went down there again. Into the depths. And, like, 
these creatures are real. And I suppose there's a lot of like mythological creatures that are inspired from them. Oh God. Okay, as you can probably tell, there has been quite a drastic cut and I'm in completely different clothes, both in real life and in the game. That's because I haven't played the game since last Friday. It is now the subsequent Wednesday. Uh, with the armor in the game, I just kind of, when I logged on there, I went in and just put on whatever weapon and armor. Got the blue up, the blue arrow up just so I had the best defense and offense possible. I was doing a lot of water damage, I noticed, which in context of the level probably was a bit silly. Okay, let's try and take out this dude. Rusty, no excuse for it. I know it looks like he's going to a sleepover, but I really like the yellow outfit. I think yellow is one half of my favorite color combination, that being yellow and purple, which are complementary colors. I shouldn't be saying that in an inquisitive manner, considering my profession. I should be a bit more authoritative about it. All right, let's go back down here again. I spent quite a bit of the week, well not the weekend, when I was waiting for Laura. We recorded our first few episodes of our Dark Souls Let's Play. And kind of in between doing that, I was watching some contemporary cartoons. Netflix has quite a lot of their own original series cartoons gone up. I can't remember the name of it uh, quite well. It's something P... Ah! Something PD. That looks like... Will I drown? No. And... It really highlighted... A serious problem that I've had with a lot of cartoons I've tried to watch at the moment. And that's that it's just... Vulgar... And horrible... For the sake of it. Like... There's one character in it that's a drug addicted dog. And it's kind of like... Why, why, why is this funny? Like, what, the, what does this have? To, your, your character is quite one note in the sense that that's all you do. It's like, oh, you get messed up and you are involved in all these horrible things. It's like it's shocking and provocative for the sake of it, without much reason to be. And I bring it up because I finally finished Disenchantment. Mac Croning's new show. Wow, this episode really does not want to go smoothly. As you can tell, there's just been another cut. My phone memory was full, so I had to restart absolutely everything. I thought I had deleted everything off it recently. Great, another one of those fires lit. Keep the black sludge away. Climb up. What was I talking about? Yeah, that TV show that I watched. And it reminded me of uh, Matt Croning's Disenchantment, which I watched all 10 episodes of, and it should have been right up my alley. Like, I love fantasy. Fantasy is... Like, if you go sci-fi, thriller, crime, whatever, fantasy will always win the day for me. Again, it's probably growing up on Lord of the Rings that did that. And while it had some of the typical conventions of a fantasy kind of world, it lacked that sense of adventure that you generally associate with fantasy kind of um, stories or worlds and this, even just forgetting that like the humor within it seems just so uh, mean spirited that I just couldn't connect with it and that's like coming off the back of shows like Futurama 
and The Simpsons, which there just seems to be so much ten is tenderness the right word, but the characters seemed to you know you cared about them, you cared about what was going on with them, and you understood their plights and you felt their pain. These guys, it was just like they were just bad people doing bad things for the sake of it. Like while I get there was characters like that in both Futuramas and and. The Simpsons, Bender being a prime example of it, it, there was always some sort of redeeming quality to them, which I just don't think this enchantment got across. Whew. And I know a lot of people will probably give me grief when I would say something like, oh, what's down here? Oh, no good. I have no idea where I am. Oh, we're back to here. Might as well just run away. And run. Hmm. That was a bit of a waste, wasn't it? Yeah, people would give me grief for saying that something like... Uh, I think Family Guy is an incredible bit of television. Well, I haven't watched it in a few years now, being honest. But when I was a teenager, like... Family Guy, to me is probably one of the oh and this is going to sound really arrogant not arrogant but pretentious i think it's one of the greatest pieces of postmodernism that has ever been created it's just so self-referential so self-aware satirical ironic and biting and the way that it um consumes culture it cannibalizes it and regurgitates it out that's what made family guy special even though that there was points where it was like that they were relying on kind of lowbrow humor or seemed to be aiming towards the lowest common denominator there was always something to it there was always an underlying reference that you might have been missing rather than just like in that show, within the first few minutes, there's a guy being shot in the testicles by his son. And it's just really vulgar and over the top. And it's like, was there a need for that? Like, is it that funny? Oh. I need to learn what those little green things are called so I can... Oh. There we go. So I can actually celebrate when I see them. Kodama. Not Koda. Kodama. I'm just going to call him Koda. Because that's what always pops into my head when I see them. That's probably disrespectful to... Oh, dear. Was that like... He has a long range and... Oh, he's thrown swords. There's swords stuck in his back. Is that... What are they? Are they people that were lost at sea? Or is it... The... I hate that move. I need to get rid of that. I suppose why I'm thinking a lot about cartoons at the moment as well is... Oh, a bit late for that. It's fairly in tatters. I um, watched the very last episode of Adventure Time this morning. Another show I haven't watched since probably mid-season six. Yeah, mid-season six, probably. Oh, no. So, yeah, about mid-season six, season seven. I think... Around just after the time that they would have beaten the leech. And in fairness, I didn't really understand the context of the final episode with the... Um, it was Princess Bubblegum versus her uncle Gumbold. And it seemed like there was going to be a big epic war about the breakout. I, I, I didn't understand the background of that. But it was still all the characters that I had cared about. Oh, trophy. And... Just all the callbacks that were in it. <clears throat> that was silly. And the emotional resonance of the show. That's what I'm getting at. Like, 
What adventure? I wouldn't say Adventure Time is Cartoon Network's magnum opus. I know a lot of people would give that to like Steven Universe and Grav. I know Gravity Fall was Disney, wasn't it? Steven Universe, at least. And um, I never watched that, but I would definitely say that um, Over the Garden Wall is up there. And I just love Adventure Time. Never watched a regular show either. But that it distills such laugh kind of topics down into a form that could be appreciated and enjoyed by both kid and adults alike it was a, just such an incredible feat for not just an animated show but uh, oh, there's going to be something awful here is there no but just any TV show full stop I mean Everything from the aftermath of a nuclear war with um, Simon and Marceline's arc, which was very... I know a lot of people make the comparison quite a bit. Oh, what's this? Oh, no. Oh, wait. Is that one of those demon walls? Yeah. Where have we opened back up to here now? Okay, that's quite close to the start of the level is reminiscent of The Last of Us and just that whole tragic arc of him kind of losing his mind and becoming the Ice King and what, why he did it and the search for kind of for power and stuff and kind of the tragedy then that was his relationship with Marceline down to Marceline's relation <laughs> I think I just think Marceline's a great character like that they went into an LGBT QA relationship with her and Princess Bubblegum and then to finally confirm that in the final episode as well was I thought quite brave I'm not sure if there's any other cartoons that have done that quite so explicitly when they finally shared their kiss and reignited their relationship but that it just ends in a way that gives so much closure to everything no cut that I s yeah, the way it's framed is that it's kind of thousands of years in the future and we're seeing all these new characters and just a world that is touched by but different to the one that we've seen as the prime timeline in Adventure Time throughout the years. And the narrative, the voice to frame it is that Bimo is the king of Ooh and is telling the story of how the world ended i suppose or how the great war ended and uh, i suppose what might be the last great kind of adventure of finn and jake and the rest of the gang what is out here no don't a deal and it's just so poignant how they wrap everything up that it shows that it, it just really is perfect in that it's not the end of their story per se but it's the right point to leave their story and that's what makes it good like they still go on to develop as people and probably have lives after the show ends I know they're not real but you know what I mean and that by framing it from the future it shows that well oh yeah there doesn't need to be some tragic death to give the story some emotional resonance or to make it feel heavy and weighty because in the end even though they're alive at the end of the show and everything is good they still eventually will all die like the world will move on and there's this great song that both refers to that and both the kind of the ending of the show And the ending of the show in that it's all about how everything is ha that we live in the now and everything has happened everything is happening and that will always exist kind of in memory or in the past or something like that and there'll always be kind of these relics the whole on to that just because it's over doesn't mean it's gone 
and it was a really beautiful kind of takeaway and note to end the show on. And then they kind of have the montage of what everyone is up there kind of set to the closing song. You know, the, Come along with me. That, I think that's the name of the episode as well. Or the four mini episodes that compromise the 40 minute episode. I've waffled about cartoons for quite a bit now, haven't I? I think this looks like it should be where Yumi Bozo is. What's out here? F you, dude. Stop this dude. Watch your backs and stay away from the yoki up ahead. I probably should watch my back, but I'm not going to take your advice for it. Who wants to come to a sleepover? That was far too creepy, even by my standards. Yumi Yumi Bozo. You don't need I want to know what he is. I'm going to have to do some research. Because... Is, it, is he water-based or fire-based? Oh, what the hell is going on? How do I fight this? Um, there's armor over here. Hello. First try. First try. From the... When we first saw this guy in the cinematic from the last mission, what the hell... Right, what do we do, what do we do, what do we do? How the hell are you meant to fight him if I can't get... Okay, we can do this now. Let's just get one hit in on him. That's the plan. One hit. We can do that at least. Yeah, that's what we want. Nope. You have to bait him into that, I'm guessing. Oh, he's moved around. He's like a giant squid or so. Whoa ho! Can we get in close to you here? Can't. Oh, Hayden. Whoa ho! One hit! That was the goal. That's all I wanted. Did little to no damage, but. Okay. Right. We see what he's capable of now, at least. Yes. Yes. Oh god, I'm still doing little to no damage though. This is going to be a massively drawn out fight. I don't know when to hit and when not to hit. I can't tell if he's going to do that can't hurt that. Not good. Not good. Not good. Not good. Can't tell what he's at. One hit in. I wonder should I be trying some ranged... Not worth it. <sighs> Get off! There must be something that you wear him down enough and he just like... Uh, Staggers. Ooh. Let's be ready. Ugh. This is why I don't play first person shooters, because I have terrible aim. He hasn't done that, like, death blast in a bit. 
Concentrate, concentrate, concentrate. He's spitting rocks. I wonder, can you break those? Here we go. What is the purpose of him doing that, I'd like to know. Oh, here we go. Do, 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 do. Still, not nearly enough damage to make it worth it. I was doing so well. Let's see if any of these... Oh, fire does massive damage. Okay, I need to see if I have any actual fire equipment then. Oh, my, my spirit does fire damage. Jump up, jump up, jump up. never got that warning before so my PlayStation overheated and it's a good thing that it gave me a warning because things are about to get very hot in here against this boss now that I know it's its weakness come on and when I say it's gonna get really hot in here I mean it's gonna burn me to a crisp with that Yumi, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Yumi? Oh, is that like baiting me there? Oh, nice that you ran straight off, I suppose. Right, let's try this. Whoa, that's a serious damage to him. Uh, let's douse my sword and fire. And dive straight off the side of the Sugar. Let's be smart. Whoa, almost went off the edge. Wasn't even paying attention. Okay. Stage two. Don't know what that was, Aiden. Oh, you fool! Heal. What can he do here? That. Okay, we're getting better. We know what he's weak against, and we know his attack pattern. It's just about not getting greedy. Damn. Damn, Daniel. Come on. He's coming over to party with me tonight. Excellent. What the hell is he doing? Preparing for that big one. 
crazy damage done again. Sugar. Okay, we can... And heal. Let's not fall down the side here. And all will be good. I'm getting good at dodging that. Is he gonna come up to me? No, he's running to the other side. Oh, he is. Well. Fire gets four. That was pretty shocking. Missed absolutely all of it and got myself hit. Not smart. You can't see a thing. Explode, come on. Yeah, we have to fight him with just my skill now. Oh, and we all know there's none of that. I wonder if I can get in close enough to... Boom! Burn, baby! Who's the bozo now? Yes. We are on track. Let us leave this horrid place. Mission ended. You me both us dead. He seemed oh yes, just good. Knife,家康殿は最後の調略を進めておる。毛利では異国の者まで連れておったぞ。東国の守備はどうじゃ大谷京都の。新州真田はこちらに着きましょう。しかし、東国は今や徳川が本家。多くの大名がすでに密約を結んでおります。I wish I could keep track of who any of these people are. I don't remember what's going on. There was something about England and Spain. And we're in Japan. Naraba Monono Akaranu Daimyo Domoni. We might do Gio Toko. Mika Mata Gio Kurikasaste, take you Kuyasan to Ina. Me neither. I'm worried about him. I've just noticed I'm not in this scene. <笑>もはや I mean, if you trust him, it's your own fault. Stop being so creepy with your smiles, dude. Two trophies back to back, that's pretty great. For just watching a cutscene. And with that, everybody ends episode six of her first time Hayden plays Neo. Hope to see you back for Mission 7. Should be another week's time. They go up every Wednesday. You know the deal. Imperio! Like, subscribe, share. Go do my bidding. 
Muggles. <laughs>